What's the topic of today? Let's sing like Jesus. Y'all nailed it. Song. I'm so Man, you guys can read. I know. Oh. This is crazy. Nice. No. Right. But AKA the secret sauce. Josh, hit that clicker. Okay. So there's four things that I want you guys to walk out of here today knowing. It's these four things. Okay? So slow down. Be quiet. Tune in. Be, ob be obedient. Be obedient. <laughs> so say that with me. Slow down. Slow be down. quiet. Quiet. Tune in. Tune in. Be, obedient. be obedient. Slow down. Slow down. Be quiet. Be quiet. Tune in. Tune in. Be obedient. Josh, hit that click. All right. So the first one. Slow down. Now, last time I spoke on this series, we're starting a series called Walking Like Christ, as you guys know. What did I talk about specifically last time I spoke? You guys remember? I think Hey, my man nailed it. <laughs> All right. It was walking like Christ. And it was very specific. I literally named it the, the title of the series. <laughs> but it was literally walking at the pace that Jesus walked. And that we need to slow down and be more aware of the things that are around us and helping people right that are in need and stuff like that. Um, but when Jesus walked, he, he walked city to city. And he would do these signs and wonders. And he would teach in parables and all these things. But everywhere he walked, he walked at a pace where no one was left out. Does anyone remember the story I used for that? Yeah. What is it? I um, was walking at a pace and stuff. Like he was going to get go to a dying or a child that was dying. And so and since the pace that he was walking at, this lady reached out, touched his robe, got healed immediately. That's right. It's the story of Jairus and the women with the issue of blood. Levi pays attention. Bro, you get a candy. No. Wherever candy is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't have any stick. We could have candy. Oh, I think the candy is, is, is it's downstairs. Fire. Yeah, we'll go get it. <laughs> but, so, yeah, I talk about the woman with the issue of blood. And I talked about Jairus and how Jesus was headed to Jairus' house. Thanks, bro. You're welcome. And how Jesus was headed to Jairus' house. And while this was happening, the woman with the issue with blood was probably on her knees, probably not able to do much, right? Because she's in a lot of pain. And she was constantly bleeding, and the doctor said that she was only getting worse. And so Jesus walking at a pace where she was able to touch him in her agony, in her pain, and go on to raise uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead. Did she have, like, blood blood? No. <laughs> she had, it's, it's in her name. The woman with the issue with blood. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> the woman with the issue of flat feet. Yeah. <laughs> She's laying the bone. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Taylor does have flat feet. <laughs> Alright, so Jesus definitely understood the concept of slowing down, right? And Jesus even understood the importance of prayer and making time for that in his schedule. So those are the verses I got up there for you guys. Matthew 14, 23, after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. Mark 1, 35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 22, 39 through 41. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed. If there's anything that's the secret sauce to life, it's prayer. Prayer is the secret ingredient. And here's why. Because prayer is so overlooked. But a lot of Christians... I think, believe in God, and they, and they believe that God exists, and they, they believe the concept of God, but they don't have that intimate relationship with Him. See, prayer is this kind of segue, if you will, but that allows us to have a relationship with God. It's our communication with Him, right? Hello? Yes. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> and so, prayer is the secret sauce, because prayer is what allows us to... Um, talk with God to have that intimacy with him that he longs to have with us, okay? And so Jesus understood the concept of slowing down and spending private time with God, and if Jesus did that, how much more do we need to do that? And so the thing is, is like, I'm, I just want to challenge you guys to, even if it's 5, 10, 15 minutes a day, just dedicate that time just talking with God. See, prayer is not this... Um, prayer is not us talking all the time. I think a lot of Christians get this concept of, 
you know, we always have to be talking like Jesus died. I pray for my husband. He's been mean lately. Like, just, just fix him, God. God, I, I pray. I pray for my sister. She's been really rude to me. Like, we say these things. But the truth is, we need to also be tuning into what God is trying to say to us. See, God knows our problems. He knows our circumstances, correct? And it's okay to speak life about someone, but we need to watch our words and make sure that we're not speaking negative things about someone, even in prayer, right? Okay. So, let me give you an analogy about slowing down. If you were to take a plane over the city of, I don't know, New Mexico City, is that a city? Yes, it is. All right, New Mexico City. If you were to take a plane... Mexico City, not New Mexico. So Mexico City, if you were to take a plane over that, you would see some of the buildings, some of the tall buildings, some of the streets, some of the cars, right? But you wouldn't be able to get that kind of idea of what Mexico City's like. But if you were to take a train from one end of Mexico City to the other end of Mexico City, then you would have a decent idea of what the culture is like, what some of the people are like, what some of the buildings look like. But if you were to slow down and walk from one end of Mexico City all the way to the other end of Mexico City, you would have a very good idea of what Mexico City is like. You'd probably be able to speak some of the language. If it's a different language, I have no idea. Um, Mexico. Well, yeah, there's New Mexico, all right? All right. <laughs> well, look. all right, look, we're just gonna erase that, cut that, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, we had the guy edit the videos, all right? We're really good, we're safe. That ain't going on YouTube. Uh, yeah, just edit it so it makes you sound smart. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So if you were... If you, slowing down allows us to be more aware. It allows us to really take in everything in the moment, right? Because in our lives, especially the older I get, the more I realize, that, the more I realize how busy everything is. And my, my days are scheduled to a T. Like, there's never any downtime anymore. And I know it's that case for you guys as well. You guys wake up, you go to school, you go home, you, you, got, you play video games. You guys find ways to fill up your schedules, right? You play basketball, you do whatever. And the, the thing is, is we need to slow down and we need to make God a priority in our lives. And we need to make prayer time a priority in our life. Amen? Amen. All right. And so, hit that clicker. I'm going to share the story of Jesus Mary and Martha. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all her preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things. But few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. All right, this story is very significant. A lot of us are Martha, right? Martha's putting in work. She's in the kitchen. She's being a good host, because this is very important. You have to understand that back in their day, it was very important that women were being a service, especially if you had to get a guest over. It was very important that they were, they were cooking, they were preparing, that they were doing things to be a service to the to, the, to their guest, right? And so Martha is doing a good job. She's, she's in the kitchen, she's cooking, she's doing good, and I just get this image of Martha like peeking her head into the living room and there's just Mary, right? Just sitting at Jesus' feet. Just like that song that Lauren was singing. I sit at your feet. And Mary's just chilling there. And Martha's like, Brad, where, where are you at? Like, why are you just sitting there? Like, and Jesus is just having a conversation with her. They're just having a good time. And Martha's like, get in the kitchen and help me. Help me. This pumpkin pie ain't going to cook itself. All right? She's getting all upset. And so Mary is the example of what we need to do. See, in our lives, we often get so caught up and get so distracted, even serving Jesus, even being a service to our church, or even being a service to those around us, doing good things. But I'm here to tell you, it's more important to spend time with God than it is those things. It's, it's, it's important, yeah. <laughs> and it's important that we're sitting at our feet, that we're sitting at Jesus' feet, not our feet. That we're sitting at Jesus' feet and spending time with Him, having that, that personal moment. I can just see Mary just sitting there and just clinging to every word that He's saying. Just spending time with Him. 
And it's very important that we do the same in our life, despite the busy schedule, despite our responsibilities. Just like the tortoise and the hare. Y'all have heard me preach on this, I don't know how many times, right? The tortoise and the hare, I love this analogy. So, the tortoise is putting in water. He's grinding. He's focused. One step at a time. <laughs> and the hare is just smooth. He's so fast, like lickety spin. Just super fast. And he's just way ahead. Yeah, he's Brady. All right? Brady, tortoise. <laughs> what? What? Brady's the hare. All right? And so the hare is obviously faster, more skilled, more talented. And he takes off and he gets distracted and gets caught up at this house. Right? He's having some dinner. He's doing his thing. Tortoise is focused. He's very, he's consistent. He's taking step by step by step. And the hare's like, oh, the tortoise is catching up. Takes off. And he gets distracted again. He falls asleep at a tree. Tortoise is consistent, grinding, putting in work day after day. Don't know what tortoises do. That's right. And the hare sees the tortoise and he's like, bro, oh, I got to catch up. And he's like, takes off. And he's about to reach the finish line. I don't know what he gets distracted by, but he gets distracted by something. And he loses the race because the tortoise is too clutch, bro. The tortoise is too clutch. And so the point is, is that distractions can get us to fall away from our calling, to get us to not focus on our destiny, can get us to fo not focus on spending time with God, right? So we need to sometimes put aside those distractions. Even putting some, uh, if, you're, if you play video games every day, just take 10 minutes, just turn it off and just try to tune into what God is saying. Tune into what the Holy Spirit's saying. Amen? Amen. All right. Hit that clicker, bro. Okay. Be quiet. Some of y'all talk too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bring it. Just kidding. Okay. Just kidding. Okay, buddy. You haven't known me Look, long. I'm just jealous because I'm Taurus. All right? You're the hair. Oh. But I got a story. So 1 Kings 19, 11 through 12. The Lord said... Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. This is interesting to me. Oh, and by the way, to give you context, this is the story of Elijah, right? Josh? Right? Yeah. Yeah, Elijah goes up on the mountain. I just had a picture. And I just find it very interesting that God would speak to us in a whisper and, and show himself in a whisper. Especially because I feel like if I was God, I'm not, thankfully, but if I was, I would want to show up in an earthquake. You know what I'm saying? I would want to show up in in a fire. I would want to show up on a surfboard, on a plane, right, just coming down, and the, earth, the earthquake just like parts ways, and then water just shoots up, and I would want this big epic thing, right? But God wasn't in all that. He came in a whisper. And I had to ponder, like, why would God speak to us in a whisper? Like, why would he even do that? Like, what's the point? Why, why isn't he just like blatant with everything, and just super clear, and just easy, and just in our face? Sometimes he is. I mean, he talked to Moses in a burning bush, like, as, as clear as it gets. And, well, actually, if you think about it, it's probably common for bushes to burn back then. Because the desert, I feel like it would cause them to burn. But this one, you kind of lies on fire, but they not burn. Yeah. Oh, but it wouldn't consistently burn, like it did. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it wouldn't be, you guys know what I'm saying? Like, it wouldn't be uncommon for a bush to catch fire in the desert. And so for him to go investigate, like, oh, that thing's not burning up. It's like wisdom. <laughs> All right. The point is, is I had to ponder why God would speak to us this way. And the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. Because God isn't just talking to us to hear himself talk, right? A whisper, you have to be very quiet in order to hear. Right? Like what Trey's doing right now. A whisper. Right? You have to be able to hear that. And it's tough to hear. Right? You have to be very close to someone in order to hear a whisper, correct? Just like that moment. You have to be close enough in, in order to hear that. And something I do with my three-year-old nephew, his name is Josh Sheen, he's so adorable. I do this thing all the time, and he's so skeptical now. But um, I used to do this thing where I was like, Josh Sheen, come here. I have something to tell you. I 
need to whisper it to you. Come here, I have something to tell you. And he was like, Uncle Devin, I don't know. And I was like, I have something to tell you. I'm serious, come here. And he was like, okay. And I'll start walking and he's all skeptical because he knows what's about to happen. I'm like, serious, come here. I have something to tell you. And I'll, I'll go to his ear and I'm like, about to whisper something. And I'm like, and I pause. And then I just snatch him. And then I take him and I like pound him on the couch. And then he, he loves it. He's like, again. And I'm like, I'm like all right. Yeah, he knows what's coming. And that's what God wants with us. He wants that closeness. He wants that intimacy. He's not just talking to hear himself talk. See, the reason he's whispering is because you have to get closer to him to hear it. Make sense? Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, hit that clicker. Clicker guy. What's it say? Tune in. Tune in. That's right. Tune in. So as we read earlier, we see that Jesus takes time to spend private time with God, to spend time with the Father. Now, I know some of you have heard the term tune in before. It's a very Christianese phrase that we use without even realizing it. It's, it's something that we say without even, <laughs> like, it's just a, a concept we use. So when I say tune in, I'm basically saying to be aware of what God is trying to say to you at any moment. It's consciously making a decision to listen intently to what the Holy Spirit has to say, right? And so the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit can speak to us in many ways, through dreams, through promptings, through our feelings, uh, through visions. He can speak to us through our conscience, through a voice. Like, he can audibly, he can speak to you through a burning bush, right? Through a whisper. All these things. And learning to discern the Holy Spirit's voice can be a very tricky thing. It can, at first, it doesn't have to be, but it often is. <laughs> and especially if you aren't taking the time to read Scripture, here's the important part. If you aren't taking time to read truth and to read Scripture, it's going to be tough to discern what the Holy Spirit is actually saying. And so let me just uh, start with this verse. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 through 15 says... Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by, the, by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. See, we don't want to be tossed back and forth by every scheme, by every cunning plan that, that the enemy or that the people of this world try to use against us. It says, instead of speaking truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect in truth and in love. And so, if we don't know what truth is, it's going to be very tough to discern what is the, the Holy Spirit, what's the enemy, and what's our flesh. Our flesh is constantly trying to pull us, and it's constantly longing after things, it's constantly lusting after things. The enemy is just trying to constantly trick you, constantly trying to tempt you. The Holy Spirit is trying to guide you closer to God. The Holy Spirit is, is uh, trying to speak to you, trying to give you advice, right? Trying to just make you feel intimate with God. The Holy Spirit is God, right? Yep. Okay, so tuning in. Kind of like radio frequencies, if you will, or TV channels. In order to get the right channel on the TV, or the right channel on a radio, you have to tune it to the right channel, right? Otherwise, you got static. That ugly noise we all hate. At least I hate it. Ten, ten times yes, especially if you crank the volume. And so, the best I can try to explain is just taking a moment in your, in your time with God to tune in, to quiet down, and just tune in to what He's saying. Right frequency, right? Get on the right channel. Just take a moment to really consciously try to seek God. Okay, how many of you guys actually do that in your daily life? Actually try to seek God or tune in to what he's trying to say. Okay. So this is something that we need to begin to implement in our lives. And it, I'm not, it doesn't even have to be in your private time. It can just be something that you do in your car on your way. To somewhere on your way to a game, oh, yeah. on your way to school. Good, cool. Yeah. Hey, that's smart. Need prayer before you go to school. 
Okay. Next up. Hit that clicker, bro. Come on, I want to do it. Well, you want to hit the clicker? Yeah, I want the clicker. Sorry, bro. Next time. <laughs> okay. Be obedient. So when God tells us what, what to do, and when God speaks to us in our life, it's very important that we be obedient to it. So if you're walking through your hallways, you're walking on the street, and God tells you, hey, I want you to go pray for that one person. I want you to go demonstrate your love to that person. I want you to do something, right? I want you to go share that prophetic word that I gave you for that person with them. It's very easy for us to cower away from that, right? It's very easy for us to be like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> but it's important that when you get that inkling, when you get that feeling, when you get that moment, that you're obedient to God and that you step out and do it. Because here's the thing. If you don't do that, it's costing them. It's not costing you anything. They're missing out on a word that God was trying to say. They're missing out on a, on a seed that you could have planted. They're missing out on a demonstration of love that you could have gave, right? Amen? Amen. All right, so this verse. Luke 11, chapter... Uh, chapter 11, verses 28. He replied, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey. The context of this verse is a little funny. So basically, Jesus just casted out a demon. And this demon was psycho. Psycho demon. Like this demon was crazy. Tossing this dude into the fire. Tossing this dude on the walls. Like this demon was crazy demon. Okay? Jesus came in and said, Be gone. Get out of here. You ain't, you ain't here no more. Demon left. That's simple. That's Jesus for you. Though. So crazy. But... The thing is, is after that happened, a woman was like, blessed is your mother who gave birth to you. And this was his answer. He was like, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey. That tells me that it's not so important. Good works is, is good, but they're not as important as obedience. Sacrifice isn't as much as important as obedience. And I've heard that, I think it was Lane that shared that to me at some point. Somebody shared it with me. That sacrifice is more important than obedience. And I really had to stop and ponder what that meant. Obedience to the word, obedience to truth, to scripture, is more important than good works. And for instance, so the Bible tells us to honor our bodies. The Bible tells us to that our bodies are a temple to take care of our bodies, right? What's more important? <laughs> that you work super hard, day and night, serving those around you and impacting those around you and you're just dragging your body into the ground because of how much you're working and you're forgetting to eat and you're, and you're starting to mentally go crazy because you're not taking care of your body because you're working so hard. Or to be obedient to what the Word says and to take care of your body, to seek God, to spend time with Him, right? Taking care of your body looks different for everyone. Sometimes taking care of my body is eating donuts, having a cheat day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just kidding. That's not how you take care of your body. You take care of your body by going to the gym. Right? Eating pretty good. Right? <laughs> Lauren's like, uh-uh. <laughs> that ain't my style of taking care of my body. Dieting, cleansing, fasting. I don't know. Whatever it looks like for you. We all have different ways. Right? Yoga? No, actually. Actually, no. Yoga is not. <laughs> that can be demonic. According to some people. So, we're not going to go there. Direction is okay. Yoga, probably not. So, there you go. <laughs> Stretching's okay. In gym class. <laughs> so, it's important that we're obedient to what God is saying and also what the Bible says, right? Whatever the Bible says, we need to implement in our lives. We need to not just read it as knowledge, begin to be obedient to the words on the page and make it a lifestyle, correct? Okay, so hit that clear. Actions speak louder than words. We all know the guy that's really cocky, that's always talking, that's always... <laughs> okay, <Brad. laughs> That guy that just can't keep his mouth shut. <laughs> it's loud. And is just really overconfident, right? We don't usually like that guy, right? Like... <laughs> I had a party with him. <laughs> yeah. Brady, you did that to yourself, my man. I wasn't trying to call you that. <laughs> but look, there's those guys sometimes they're not able to back up their words, right? When they get in the game or when they go up to do whatever they're going to do, their actions don't always add up to what their words were trying to say about themselves, right? They say, oh, I'm all this, I'm all that, and then they go and do it, and you're like, what? <laughs> 
So actions speak louder than words. If you want to, your lifestyle, the way you represent Christ is going to be much louder than your words. You can preach at someone, but I'm here to tell you, it's much more important that you're a living example of Christ. Because the way that you carry yourself, the way that you demonstrate Christ, and the way that your actions are just going to speak volumes to people. I mean, the way you encourage, the way you forgive, the way that you love. People are going to wonder what's so different about you. It's not going to be something where you have to preach at people to get them saved. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're going to wonder by spending time with you, being around you, they're going to wonder, what makes this guy so different? Why is he so forgiving? Why is he so kind? Why is he so loving? Why is he so good at hockey? Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys Why is he so smart? Like, Levi can preach at this point. Oh, no. Now, now you're just offended. Just kidding. Wait, what? And what I'm trying to say is if we really want to save people, we need to be living. We need to be a lifestyle of representing Christ, right? Not just with our words. Not just saying we're Christians. Not just saying we're believers. But actually walking it out on a daily basis. Right. Yep. And so be obedient and take action towards what God is asking you to do. So what are the four things? Name them. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Focus in. Man, you missed the one that I was targeting you for. Quiet. Slow down. Quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> yep. Tune in and be obedient. Tune in and be obedient. Slow down. Be quiet. Tune in. Good be obedient. 